Thank you, my brother. Praise the Lord. I want to pray a prayer this afternoon for us that may his will be done. Amen. May his will be done. Father, I am asking this afternoon. We are asking as your children this day, this very particular moment, that may your will be done. May your will be done upon our lives. May your will be done upon your church as it is in heaven, Lord. May your will be done upon this nation. May your will be done, Abba Father. May your will be done for this particular moment. I pray that Jesus, your will be done upon these your children that are sitting before you, Lord, this afternoon. And the church online, may your will be done. May the will of the Lord be exalted upon every business, every activity that is going on right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that your will be done. Lord, we thank you, bless you. For in Jesus' name we pray and be with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we clap for Jesus once again? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, turn with me, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse, we are going to read from verse 1. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of the sin of death. For what the law was, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous Requirement of the law might be full met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind Governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are blessed this afternoon that we are talking, nothing but sharing together from the Holy Scriptures of God. My name is Reverend Ephraim from St. John's Chapel, Zira. I love the Lord Jesus as, as my Lord and Savior, and he has been working with me by God's grace. The topic we are looking at is the carnal mind, the carnal mind, an enemy against God. The carnal mind, an enemy against God. Praise the Lord. Carnal marked by the appetites and passions of the body. The fresh, the fresh desire, the carnal knowledge, etc. All humans, all too human, a slave of sin, according to Romans chapter 7, verse what we read, 14. The mind controlled by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit of God is life and peace. Praise the name of the Lord. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Still, we are trying to look at the mind, at the canoe. You are, you are still worried, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worried? Are you not acting like humans, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3? Kano, kano mind, kano. Kano, acting in Kano. Mind, mind, that is a response for, one, uh, for, man's, uh, for man's thought and feelings, the, uh, the seat of the faculty of reason. That's mind. You can recall or remember. Be concerned of what about something or something you have of somebody. 
be in charge of the mind that is in charge, the mind, my mind, and your mind. And the Bible also gives us some uh, this, um, definition of a mind. A mind, God is not human that can, should lie, no, um, no a human being that should change his mind. According to Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, which is common to many of us, mind, mind, mind. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind. He doesn't change his mind. The God we have come to worship, he does not change his mind. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob does not change his mind. Amen? He does not. He is not a human who can change his mind. That he should change his mind according to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. A spirit controls my mind. A spirit controls my mind. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. That time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds. Romans, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. Now, this afternoon, we are going to pray that God will deliver us over the carnal mind, an enemy to God. A carnal mind, an enemy to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. Paul writes the Romans, the first verse. Whenever we say therefore, meaning there was a lot, there was a lot of reasoning in the church, there was a lot that is going on, there is a lot that is going on around us, we want to reason. Yes, reasoning is good, but too much reasoning again in the physical, it takes us somewhere. Praise the Lord. Verse 8 says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is, there is no guilty for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Because, because we are baptized into his death, which speaks of crucifixion, we walk after the flesh, not by sight. This is depending on one's ability, depending on how you seek God, on how you understand God. But the spirit, the spirit that is controlled by the flesh, focuses, uh, focuses on other things. And the spirit, the spirit focusing on the finished work of Christ, that's the spirit we walk in who are not guilty. Our faith is focused on the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ of the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you walk by the, by the spirit of God, your mind is connected to the finished work of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, we are going to be quick because I want us to have time to pray and ask God to deliver us this afternoon. Verse 2 says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free, free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit of life, in Christ has made me free, has made you free from the law of sin and death. This means to us, that verse 2, this means that there are two powerful laws that are governing. Usually, there are two laws that are governing, two laws that are governing, that are governing the universe, two laws. Because through the cross, and you have removed it again. Because that through the, through the, uh, that because through the Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives the, uh, the life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Meaning that there are, there are two superpowers which I have said, power, powerful laws that are governing the universe. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which is, we are talking about the stronger, is a strong spirit. The law that breaks the law of sin. And then there is a law of sin and death. And this, is, this means that if the believer, you and me, live or attempt to live for God by any means or any, by the matter other than the faith of the Christ and his cross, then if we choose the alternative, we are doomed to failure. That's verse 2. Verse 3, verse 3 says, For what the law 
was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son, Jesus Christ, in likeness of sinful man, sinful of you. For what the law could not do, in what it was weak through the flesh. From the, uh, God sent his own son in the likeness of us in the flesh. Meaning, this God, man was helpless in every condition. We are always helpless. We always struggle. I always struggle. I want to do this. I can't do. Paul puts it right. We normally read that. When you struggle, you want to do this, you find you do the opposite. You want to do this, you find you are telling a lie. You want to do this, you struggle each day. But the good news is that, that you know, the good news is, and for sin, or flesh, sin was destroyed by God. By the, by the atonement, let me see. This means that Christ was really human, conformed in appearance of flesh, which is characterized by sin. And for sin, for sin, for sin, Christ himself for atoned for sin to destroy the power and to save and sanctify its victim, its victim. Condemned sin is fresh, destroying the power of sin by giving his perfect body as sacrifice. Whenever we come to him in repentance, whenever we come to him, acknowledging that we are not able to do it, God is faithful and his spirit work in us each day. Which means it is possible for us to defeat the flesh. That's verse 3. Which means it is possible to defeat the flesh. Verse 4, the righteousness. It talks about the righteous one. The righteous one. Verse 4 says, verse 4, let's go back to verse 4. In order that the righteous required of the law might be full met, full met in us, what do, um, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. According to the spirit. Verse 4. The righteous of the might be, uh, might, be, might be fulfilled. The law find its completion or its compl accomplishment, accomplishment in us, in us uh, by faith in Jesus Christ. It is fulfilled in us by, by us putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it? Praise the Lord. When you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the law has been accomplished. Amen. Praise the Lord. It goes on to say the work, the work within us bring about the fruit of the Spirit that is walking after the Spirit of God. Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according, in accordance with in accordance with their sin, uh, the Spirit, have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. For those who are after the, after the flesh do, do mind the things of the Spirit. Those who press their faith in Christ and the cross do exactly, do all. They, what they want to do, do them all. They are doing what the Spirit desires, which alone can bring victory in us. Praise the Lord. Which can alone bring victory upon our lives. Amen? Victory. The Spirit of God, wants you do what the Spirit of God wishes you to do, He always brings victory upon our lives. Verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, Read verse 6. Verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Praise the Lord. For, for to be carnally minded is death. For to be carnally minded is death. We shall see from down before we go to pray. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be Spiritually minded is life and peace, praise the name of the Lord. This demands our constant faith in that finished work. In that finished work, which is the way of the Holy Spirit. It means constant prayer. It means constant listening. It means constant watching. 
You remember, Jesus said, keep watch and pray. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, verse 7 here, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit God's, to God's law, nor can it do so. The mind, the mind, the mind, the mind which is carnal, the mind which is carnal. The carnal mind is enmity against God. This means to attempt to live for God by means of others than the cross which places one against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Amen? The mind that is always, want to reason, the mind that is always, you see, when we get baptized, we said that the old nature is gone and the new has come. Now, this afternoon, beloved of the Lord, this God is amazing. I had, when I was coming, I was saying, today, I'm going to speak to this God. Let his will be done as it is in heaven. And I felt it when I was just on the border. And I had some words running in me. But when I came here, God gave me only one word to pray. Let my will be done as it is in heaven. The Spirit of God, let my will be done as it is in heaven. And that's it. Sometimes we struggle for many other things when we don't depend on the Spirit of God. Let God's will be done. The carnal, the carnal mind, an enemy against God, a mind controlled by the Spirit according to this, what we have just read. Verse 5 to 8, we are set, these are minds that are set which will be determined how, to we, how we live. They determine, the minds which determines you how you live. You plan of how to live. You plan for yourself. I want to determine this time around, I must finish this. I must work for my retirement. I must be done. Period. And you work. Even you have the plan, you have every other thing. Let me tell you, for me, I have never convinced about that. And I pray that God will not, help, will not direct me in that. People talk about retirement. What? Why do I worry? When I have my creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who owns silver and gold, I have never. And I told my wife, I said, me, I'm not going to look at what is my retirement. God knows me because he created me friends. I'm talking, maybe somebody will say, no, you are wrong there. But that's me, my conviction. Praise the name of the Lord. The mind that is God, it is determined by life. Choosing to set our minds on desires or sinful nature leads to sin and hostile to God. Praise the Lord. But choosing to obey the Spirit leads to obedience and peace. And peace with God. A mind controlled by the Spirit thinks of godly things. While the mind controlled by the flesh is full of the things of the flesh. It is true. All these are very facts that everyone struggles with each day. A carnal mind, an enemy to God. The scripture that has been read to us this afternoon. Life. Life through the spirit. I was trying to read here and there. And I landed on some of the things that I, I just want to pick. Some things that we need to help us. This, we are looking at now Adam and Eve. Do you see where we're coming from? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The mind has been a battlefield. When they were in the Garden of Eden, the serpent deceived them. They did not listen to the Spirit of God. What is the carnal mind? Again, a mind which is against God. This is what we normally experience. It is worry. One, doubt, confusion, confusion, depression, anger, and feelings of condemnation. All these are attacks of the mind. Praise the Lord. The mind that is against God is full of envy, full of malice, full of jealousy, and it is against God's will. 
it is against God's will. Let me tell you, I told you one experience here, which I experienced, I experienced personally. In my place where I work, two, two now that had run in my mind. One, you want to see this kind of mind, a kind of mind that is against God. We go to scripture. Now you can imagine, I am working with you, I have a seat where I sit, you have yours. But one day, something runs in my mind. I took a fast in prayer. So when I came, I felt this seat where I have been sitting, there is something that is pressing. I told you here. And so when I checked, the Spirit of God told me, get a knife and cut this, the chair. And I got the knife, and I cut this leather chair. A leather chair, like, which one? We don't have one. Oh, like that one, yes. Like the uh, bishops. It is leather. I cut, I risked, and I cut the chair. So when, as I was cutting, as I was cutting this chair, I started to feel out of this, uh, whatever, sponge, I feel something hard like a stone. Okay? As I cut down, I begin to see something white. It is a bone. Right? A bone. A bone. So when I cut to see, to see, it is tied with a back cross. To see, to cut. When I was cutting, my friend who is called Apple, someone say, hey, Ephraim, what are you doing? So I wanted to run away. Okay? So no, no, now he was busy. I don't know what he was doing. He moved away quickly. So I cut quickly to see. So to pull out, I see now the bone tied with a back cross. There is a, 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 a head of a, a, a bird or a, a cock. I don't know whether it was a cock. It is on. It has been the chair. You wonder up to now, you wonder, when did, who, who is this person taking all this trouble to tie? I don't know how they did it. Did, did they do it from the factory? What happened? A mind, a mind driven by the sinful flesh is looking at you. Hey, this man is progressing. I must do something. I must make sure that I finish this guy. It is a mind that is against God's will upon God's people. And those are the people that we have in our communities. So one day, I cannot mind, I cannot mind. One day also I'm working, and somehow, that week, I was in the charge of the server. The server, the server, in the control room, I was in the charge of the server. So when I moved away, one of the guys came, I don't know what he did. Somehow the whole, uh, the whole system crashed. So when it crashed, I was in problems. I was in problems for three days. Okay, to restore all the data, to do all that. Then later I discovered one of my friends had tampered with it. I don't know what he wanted to do. So I ran out of my mind. I was almost finishing this guy. I did not want to forgive this guy. I kept on talking to this guy. I kept on hammering him. I said, what you have done, Julius, I cannot forgive. I talked to everyone, everyone. I wanted everyone to join me to fight this guy. Join me and fight this guy. But they were not listening. They were in their other business. A mind full of canoe. Until when this guy one day, he felt so bad. During the day, he came and said, but Ephraim, I had said sorry. I had said, forgive me, but you are saying you are a Christian. You cannot forgive me. And it hit me hard. I discovered I was now operating canary. Praise the name of the Lord. A mind that is acting carnal mind. You know carnal mind, what it does? It drives you away. Many of us, we fight sometimes. We, we, we have those meetings where you find discussions and discussions and people just throw papers around. Can of mind. So a, a, a life that is governed by can of mind, a devil. Let me tell you, friends, what happens here. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy us. He accomplishes most of that through the lies and, and the lies he puts in our heads. The devil comes each day and he puts that in your mind. He puts this in your mind to make sure that that's why we must remain constant in the spirit, in prayer, and reading God's word. Look at one example. We are going to look at a number of them as we prepare to pray. David. Remember David? David, a servant of God. David. David is seen. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, you can read verse 2 to 13. But one evening... The scripture said, David got up from his bed and walked around on the, roof of the, on, on the roof of his house and he saw 
this beautiful wife, this, sorry, this beautiful lady, the beautiful woman washing, that she was so beautiful. So David sent someone to find out about her. In verse 21, what happened? Now the devil has come in. It has begun to work on him. It has entered the carnal mind of man. And what happened? What followed? But one thing David had done, you remember the following verses, verse, verse, uh, what happens? The whole story talks about he had planned and then he went and he got Bathsheba and he slept with, uh, with her. And, and the, you know, the plot against Uriah, Uriah, and then he, he brought and then they brought, he sent for him, and he, came, he was sent again on the battlefield on the front and he was killed, all right? The sin, all this is based in the carnal mind of the flesh, the flesh, the deceitful mind, the deceitful mind of every person, which is, uh, which is, of, which is of the flesh. The flesh can lead you, any person, to that kind of scenario. And so David ended up committing that huge sin, the sin that brought David down. And let me tell you, once sin starts in you, in the flesh, it starts, it starts swiftly, softly, and then by the time you discover, it's hard for you to reverse it. We look at what? At Joseph's brothers. Joseph's brothers, what happened to them? They look at him, this dreamer, and they say, this dreamer, this dreamer, you see, they are walking canary, jealousy, full of jealousy, uh, full of envy. They said, here there is a dreamer. They said to each other, come, let us kill him and throw him into one of these um, systems and say that uh, the furious animal devoured him. Then we will see what comes of his dreams. Against God's will upon each believer's life. Against the carnal mind, against God's will upon your life. An enemy to God, an enemy, an enemy against God. And they plotted, and you know what for us, but you can see God working. A carnal mind is always looking for things. For example, Zebedee's sons, the, the, the mother of Zebedee's sons, came to Jesus with her sons and said, and she knelt before she kneeling down before the king and said, "Ask favor for from him. What is your what do you want?" He is asking. He asked her. She said, "Grant one of my sons, one of these sons of mine, one to sit at the right hand and the other on the left of your kingdom." Matthew chapter twenty-one, verse twenty. The, the, kernel that, the mind that is full of kernel, always you want to work out on your own. You want to, to work out, to run ahead of what God has planned for you. You want to, read, to see that you, it, ha, it is full of competition, as we have said. It is full of confusion, it is full of competition, it is full of deception, it is full of anger, it is full of feelings, it is full of what you see around. That's a kernel mind which is against God's will. Okay, so you know what that lady later God responded in verse 21 about what is to do and how he said it is not my will to grant your sons what you are saying. Then we continue to see the heart, the mind or the carnal mind of any believer, the, mind, the, the carnal mind against God, an enemy to God. John had seen, John has been saying to Herod, John, John the apostle, John the Baptist. It is not lawful for you to have, you can read John, Mark chapter 6, verse 18, 20 to 21. Uh, 21. John had, say, had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias snatched grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able because... Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. But let's read there and see what happened to John. John, uh, John um, Mark chapter 6, verse 18. God's, uh, uh, the gospel of Mark chapter 6, verse 18, and verse 21. The kind of mind, what we are talking about this afternoon, a kind of mind, an enemy to God. 
a carnal mind against um, a carnal mind and enemy to God. Verse 18 says, verse 18, chapter 6 says, verse 18. For John has been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herod Herodias sent a, a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able because Herod feared him because he was a righteous man, okay? Verse 21, finally, he, opportunity, an opportune time came on his birthday. Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. And you see what kind of mind is doing now through this Herod, the wife, what it is doing, the kind of mind against God. And it goes on to say, um, then uh, the king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I will give it to you. And he promised her, we, uh, he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what she, what, what shall I ask for? What, what should I ask for? Praise the name of the Lord. I cannot mind an enemy to God. You see the plot. All this is a cannot mind. What they are plotting is evil against God's will, against God's servant. And this is exactly what we experience in our homes, in our families each day. That's what we are struggling with as believers, the families. The other day, again, I was seated in the front of the taxi, and then I pulled out money. Thank God I had it that day. It was a 20 note, so I gave it to the conductor. I paid, okay? So when I paid, and I was in front, I paid, and I was looking, and everyone was seeing, all right? So when I was reaching, I started demanding the money. Please, conductor, give me my, my, my balance. And he kept on being busy, as if he's not listening. But the Spirit of God started speaking to me. This guy is likely not to give you your money, okay? So, and it came to pass. I reached the stage. So when I reached the stage, conductor, I wanted my balance. Then he said, Seek, check, check this man. This man, did you give me money? Then I started to look at this, uh, these other people to see whether they can defend me. None of them. Then the person who is seated near me, next to me, in the, you know, beside the driver. And when I was pulling out the money they were seeing, I said, I gave this man 20,000. None of them said a word. I said, now what am I going to do? Should I fight this guy? I cannot fight Okay? Praise the name of the Lord. But the guy was willing to fight me. You did not give me the money. I pulled out the other 2,000 and I gave the money. And nobody was saying, if I was full of carnal mind, that moment I was going to fight. But you see what I was going to lose immediately. When I reached home, I found that the visitors had come. And I think God had also ordained it. God has ordained that. When I reached, they are moving. They are saying, hey, Reverend, we are moving away because we have been waiting. We have been here waiting for you, but we are moving. Then the guy said, when he was entering the car, he said, but Reverend, I felt I needed to bless you. And he pulled out, he touched in his pocket and gave me. I did not count. So later, when I went inside the house to check, it is 200,000. What the guy had taken, do you see that? So God... God in his way, the believer, we don't have to fight. Don't fight. Just walk according to the Spirit of God. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Then I started to narrate the story to my wife. You know what had happened? This has been only God. This guy, when I was from town, I gave 20,000 to the conductor. But you know what happened? Everyone shot. They did not talk. They, nobody defended me. I just died myself, and I felt so bad. I was, almost, I was almost fighting this guy. But the Spirit of God kept on saying, no, you don't have to fight. And the bad thing, I was again in a quarter. So how was I going to fight? Okay? Praise the name of the Lord. I was in the quarter, so I felt so ashamed. And so when I reached home, God did it in a way you cannot believe it. We thank God for that. Amen? Moving by the Spirit of God. And this guy was moving, and he said, I felt I need to bless you, Reverend. And he touched his pocket. I cannot leave the, the home of Reverend without blessing him. And he put in my hands to check is 200,000, not 20 this time. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's not allow this, the enemy uses worries, confusion, doubt, 
and depression and anxieties to divert us to be enemies of God. A carnal mind, a carnal mind, an enemy to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So you look at what happened here. What is ending here? The verse that we are reading, Mark chapter 6 and verse 22. Verse 22 says, verse 22, verse 22 of that verse says, verse 22 says here, when the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she praised the Herod and his dinner guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me of whatever you want. And then the head of John Baptist was brought a carnal mind against an enemy to God. Do you see what, what is happening here? An enemy to God. It frustrates God's will to be done upon his church, upon your family. A carnal mind is dangerous. To any ministry, to, God, to a community where you are, a carnal mind, you always have to bring in the spirit of God. Let me tell you, carnal mind is very dangerous. I moved to the market the other day. And so when I reached the market, I have been sharing also uh, now this the third time, this testimony. In the evening, because I was, uh, I was just moving, I normally go to this market in Rosira. So when I reached, I found there was commotion. Border borders had come all over the press. And they are all fighting. They are saying, we are going to fight. Take it, take it. I don't know what was happening. Kumbe, there was this lady who bought yams the previous day. And she went and cooked yams. They did not come out very well. Okay, so she packed the same yams. She packed them in a cavera and brought them to the market. So when she brought them to the market, she had packed her rubber for there. She brought the yams to the market and she has a very genuine real concern because the yams are not good. They did not come out and it's you who sold them to me. She had genuine concern and she wanted her money. She wanted also, oh, this lady to bring, to give her and to exchange. And the border border guys rose against this man. And everyone, this lady, do look at her. And he had to go to the house. They were talking all over the place. And the lady also had jammed because all of these guys, they are working, they are canary working, driven by the fresh. So I came in, and that lady, whom, uh, who, was, who was in contention, the lady who normally sells us uh, things whenever we want some things to buy. And so I saw this lady. This lady, she cannot, she's also, why she's not willing to let go? She's going to leave the high yams there. The, the, she needs her exchange. She needs uh, this lady to give her fresh yams. And so I said, what should I do with this lady? So I said, what is it? How much money? Does she want from you? Uh, does she want? I asked the other part, the other lady. She said it was 9,000. Then how much money do you, do you want her to give? Do you want yams or money? This lady said, I want my money or yams. I said, I have money. I gave 9,000, which I had on me. Let me tell you, it had changed my ministry in that market. It had changed my ministry whenever I go there. It silenced every other because I was walking by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God brings peace. It is peace and life. The spirit of God is driven. It is peace and life. I got a ministry there. Up to now, there are many friends of mine in that place. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. A carnal mind, an enemy to God. It brings confusion. It brings anxiety. So we see from the scriptures what is happening. Carnal mind. Now Simon, you see Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Simon Peter, as we try to bring it to the cross in prayer. Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink? Because Peter is acting canary. Okay? Peter is pulling out the sword. And indeed, he did it because he was so carnal, and he cut the priest's, uh, the, 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 the servant's, the priest's servant ear, okay? But Jesus, because it is against God's will, it is against, it is an enemy to God's will, and so Jesus said, no, put it away. 
praise the name of the Lord. Men at times, we walk canary and we frustrate God's will upon our lives. Men are ways are many times in our families, in our areas, wherever we work in offices, we are affect, we are again, we are enemy to God's will upon our lives because we operate canary, praise the name of the Lord. Friends, beloved of the Lord, this afternoon, I want to pray with us. God has so much so much good things for each of us. He wants to give us and he wants to give them to us each day. They are flowing each day. And greater and among those, it is greater life. Greater life with joy and peace. But so much time, so many, many times, we let the devil get into our way of us as we live as we live our lives. We tried to worry, we tried to reach Canaan before the time. We are trying to reach Canaan. We are trying to reach the promised land before time. Because God's plan for every human being, as we quote um, Jeremiah 29, 11, that he has good plans for you, and for, for you and me to prosper. It is good. God's plan for humanity is good. It has been always good. But you see what is happening? Those thoughts that come in our way each day against God's will, an enemy to God's will, a carnal mind, an enemy to God's will, it frustrates you. I have this brother of mine. He comes one day and he said, where I had put my house, I don't have where to put the kitchen. And he said, I want to see whether you can help me. I can extend this. And I was so free because I know this man, how he walked with me. And I said, yes, you can. why do you want it to extend to? He said, up to here. And again, I said, okay, you can go in the village. You can go up to again the other side. And so he put, and he got his kitchen where he put it. And it is done. But because he walks in a canoe, one day I'm there, he comes with a book. He comes with papers. He said, with one person, he said, I want you to do an agreement for that land which you gave me. I said, why? For me, I gave you. I gave you. If you want me to give you an agreement, you are going to pay me 24 million. Do you have it? He said no. So he went back annoyed, not happy. Because he's carnal, he got annoyed. I said, what's wrong with this man? The man came and I, I felt he's my brother and I helped him freely. Then another time when I went, it was a funeral. He made sure that he came through to see me that I see that he talked to me, he's deceived because the devil's work is to fill us with those thoughts, the lies that when you are dead, that one what is going to happen, you are going to lose that place, you have no any agreement, you will lose it. Then that, those are the words he told me. He said, um, My wife is telling me that uh, you know me and you will not be here, and someone is going to claim that place. I said, Who is going to claim it? It is me, I gave it to you. What's wrong with you? If you want an agreement, I still insist that you will give me 24 million. Praise the name of the Lord. But you see, the kind of mind, the kind of mind's work is to make sure that it kills God's plan upon our lives. The kind of mind is dangerous. In any meetings you have been, you see people getting out of their minds, they are stressed. When you begin to reason beyond, because God has given us power to understand power in his spirit. And when you seek his spirit, you find him. When you listen to him, he guides you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, verse 1 and 12, what does it say? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, let's read. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, to um, sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's, God's will upon your life. He is good. God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what we need to do as believers. 
And that's what we must do every time. Whenever I come in the presence of God like this, I am completely changed. I'm completely ministered because I allow the Holy Spirit to minister to me. Whenever we come to the Lord, let's come to the Lord with thanksgiving. And we are going to pray. Friends, we are, I'm going to invite us to stand as we pray and ask God to give us his spirit. The spirit of God is gentle, is calm, is full of love, is full of joy, is full of peace. Amen? We renew our minds each day. So when we get saved, the gospel, when we get saved, beloved, the gospel, is, it needs to move from our minds to our hearts. If the gospel remains in our minds, you do things carnally. But if the gospel gets into our hearts, you rest in, it rests in your heart. The Lord is able to do everything for you. That is what the Bible says. It says, the Bible says, the Bible says, remember, the Bible says that Abraham's faith was credited to him because he trusted God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. When we listen to the gospel, what does the gospel do? It does not remain in our minds. It comes to my heart. I pray that this afternoon, as you listen to every gospel, as you read the word of God, as you try to meditate, the gospel, it allow the ministry, the word, the spirit of God to go deep in your heart and to minister to you, not remain in your head. What is happening? They remain in our heads. We start to reason like any other person. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. I pray that we begin to reason the way God wants us to reason in the name of Jesus. The spirit of God, the gospel, whenever it comes to us, not rem it remains in our mind, we remain carnal. But the gospel gets into our hearts, when it gets into our hearts, then rests in our hearts. The Lord God himself will rest in our hearts. And everything will change will change, and then we will begin to testify of the goodness of the Lord. We will be, begin to reflect of what God is doing. Paul says that we are the letters. You will begin to be a letter. A letter. You don't have to tell that I am a believer. I have never. You don't have to tell. Even one time, let me tell you again and again and again. I was just in Tinder, but I was just in my moments, my good time, just walking aside. Not in a car of shot, nothing. I was with mommy. So when we are walking, these border border guys, they don't know me. That place, I'm sure none of them know me. They said, Reverend, Reverend, come and pray for us. Then my wife said, how did they know? You are not in Kora? You are not? And I don't think they know me. I said, I will pray for you. But you see, we are the letter. The spirit in us will speak. The spirit of us. Because we are all spirit. We are spirit. We are, you know, humanly. What is driving us is the Spirit of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray together. I want to allow you to have a moment. The church online just speak to God. Let God's will be done upon your life. And the God's will is, no, God's will is good for us. Allow the Spirit of God to minister to you. To minister to your heart. To minister to your heart. Transform your mind. Paul is speaking to us this afternoon to be transformed, to, re to be renewed, transformed by the renewing of our mind today. Then we'll be able to test and prove what God's will is for us. That he is good, pleasing, and perfect will. But the carnal mind brings death, brings frustration, brings worries, brings depression, brings envy, we rebuke the spirit of Kano in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it in our lives. We rebuke it upon our lives. I pray that Jesus Christ, you are God in your mercy. You raise your anointing upon each of us, anointing that breaks every yoke. The yoke of Kano, Kano mind be broken in the name of Jesus. That you set us free to listen and know and walk by your spirit, not sight in the name of Jesus. I pray that you raise your anointing upon each of us this afternoon, upon your church upon the church online, upon every believer, that the Spirit of God that will help us to walk by you, not by flesh, in the name of Jesus. Repent of every weakness. Repent of the spirit of worries and anxiety. Repent where we have sinned against you, where we have become an enemy to you, Lord. May you help us. Repent on behalf of the church. We repent on behalf of our families. We repent, Abba Father. That you forgive us, Lord, and we set us free. 
and that we walk by the flesh, by the spirit, not by the flesh. I pray that anointing of God rest upon each of you. Anointing of God that breaks every yoke rest upon you. Rest upon you as you go to work. Rest upon you as you, you interact with friends in your families and cause you to walk in the spirit of God. And remember that finished work at the cross. And as you continue to work for Jesus, Jesus, his spirit is in us and transform us and renew our minds as we read his word and listen to the spirit. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you. Can we clap for Jesus? Praise the name of the Lord.